of you might be familiar with this slide, um, just kind of talking about the different ways that you can work and interact with RAP. The cohort browser and using the web um, user interface that's available at ukbiobank.dnanexus.com. You can also use um, apps uh, using the web interface as well. And, uh, and yet another way is to work with uh, data on the platform is using Jupyter Lab and Spark Jupyter Lab. But today we're going to be focusing on just the command line interface. So let's talk about why we need a command line interface and an API and why that's why they're necessary. Uh, so whenever we mention uh, CLI, what we basically mean is it's short for a command line interface. So you can do many of the things that you can do in the, uh, in the web user interface, um, but it basically gives you, working with the command line gives you much more control and more options um, than using the web use, user interface. Um, this is especially important when you're doing kind of more complex tasks such as building workflows um, or automating things. So for example, maybe you want to run Swiss Army Knife on a bunch of files. So uh, the command line interface basically gives you the ability to run the same app on a bunch of files at once. Um, the way you know that you're working with command line interface uh, on the command line interface is that all of the commands are prefixed with this DX. So the command line and the web user interface are both, uh, they both are interacting with what's called the API server. So API is short for application programming interface. Um, and so um, if, this, if, if a command is not available in the API, then it just doesn't exist. Um, so basically both the web user interface and the command line interface are interacting with the API server, which is actually do, um, goes and um, achieves the tasks that you want to do with it, um, such as like searching for files in your project or um, running apps or things like that. Um, so let's dive a little deeper into like the command line interface and how it interacts with the platform. So the one thing that um, when I was starting to learn, you know, how the command line interface is that you might think that you need to SSH into a machine. You, uh, the, tr the truth is once you have installed the DX, to, uh, the DX toolkit, um, basically all of your interactions are going to be from your own machine. So you're not SSHing into a machine, you're interacting with a platform through the API server. And what happens, uh, the, re the way you kind of know that you're interacting with the, um, with the platform is that all of your commands are going to begin with uh, DX. So for example, you, uh, this is just kind of a quick kind of uh, quick overview of what you can do. So you can sign into the platform using the DX login command. Um, and if you have multiple projects, you can select the appropriate project to be in using DX select. Um, and then say you have uh, files you want to run a particular job, uh, you can use this DX run command. And if your, your job has generated kind of results, you can basically uh, look, for, look for them um, and manipulate the files that are generated using DX find DX um, MV or DX download. So to be able to interact um, you, on the command line, you do need to install the DX toolkit. So there is a detailed step-by-step -step guide here to install the DX toolkit. And um, it does require Python 3. So um, whether you are on Windows, um, OS X or Linux, um, there is a, there is, um, you can download the distribution of Python and install it on your machine. 